Hi everybody, it's Olivia Blanchard at The Brand Builder, and here I am in London, and I want to talk to you guys about the value of a Facebook fan, the value of a Facebook like, the value of a Twitter follower, for example, um, because it, it actually fits into the whole discussion of the ROI of social media, and I think we've gotten a little bit off track with this. And essentially, this is how it started. Agencies, initially, in the early days of social media management, started tracking followers, fans, likes, shares, those types of metrics as their KPIs. And essentially they built their entire measurement practice based on these KPIs. And clients after a while started asking them, what about the ROI? Show me the ROI. How much, what is the value of these followers and fans that you've acquired for us? Because that's been mostly the focus. And unfortunately, the only way to measure the value of fan follower is to look at the types of transactions that come out of those particular uh, followers and fans and basically track it over time. So if a Facebook fan or a Twitter follower spent $50 on your product last month, the value of that fan or follower for that month was $50. If they spent $3, their value was $3. That's it. It's, it's only something that you can look back on and actually determine that value based on their transactions. Or they've influenced other people through word of mouth or recommendations to spend money as well, whether they're acquiring customers for you or helping other existing customers buy more often or buy a different product or whatever. But essentially, it is tied to the transaction behavior, either their own or the transaction behaviors of people they influence, right? So that's how you measure the value of a fan or follower. You have to actually connect the fan and follower data with the transaction data, put it all together, and you can either look at specific groups that fall within certain categories, or you can average it all out. It's really up to you. There's a lot of different ways of doing that. The problem is when an agency or a research firm tries to build an algorithm that will automatically calculate this cookie cutter version of a social media follower or fan value. Uh, and I've seen a few of those pop up recently where and I've seen actually fairly decent publications push this notion that the value of a fan has been determined at $1.37. The value of a Twitter follower is actually $1.22. So the Facebook fans are actually more valuable than Twitter followers. It's completely ridiculous. If you really want to focus or at least determine the value of your fans, of your followers, of the readers of your blog, you have to do the hard work. You have to look at the transaction data. You have to correlate that to those particular individuals. And that's it. And you look back month to month, quarter over quarter, year over year, if you see any differences. Hopefully they spend more and they bring more of their friends over. And if not, well, you've got some, uh, some work to do. But that's how you calculate the value of the fan or follower. So one way to think about it is to try to compare the value of a Facebook fan in the BMW community versus the value of a fan in the Coca-Cola or Pepsi community. Obviously they're very different products with very different price points and different sales cycles. And I would be willing to bet that if you really look at the average BMW fan who's also a customer, you'll find that per year they probably spend more than the average Coca-Cola or Pepsi drink. I could be wrong. But you can see kind of the, the different correlation. And so the value of a Facebook fan for BMW will not be the same as the value of a Facebook fan, fan or a Pepsi or Coca-Cola or Monster or any other soft drink because the products are so different. So you have to really be careful, not believe in these cookie cutter uh, algorithms and determine the value of your fans and followers on your own based on those transactions. I have to say, any attempt to uh, assign an arbitrary value to a follower or a fan without doing the transaction correlation is going to yield absolutely nothing. The, the algorithm might be solid, but it's whatever it's measuring, it's the wrong thing. It's not the actual value. One more thing I want to caution you against, or at least you know, caution you about, is the substitution of value for cost and cost for value. They're very different discussions, but it gets a little bit confusing sometimes when you talk to media buyers or you're dealing with an agency. And some agencies, rightly so, look at the difference in cost of reaching X amount of consumers through traditional channels versus reaching the same amount of customers through social media channels or through other channels. And what happens is you have an equivalency equation that happens where they look at you and they'll tell you, okay, for what we charged you, 
to reach all of these people, these 10,000 consumers yeah. through social media, it would have cost X with traditional media. And that's very nice, and it's a really good way to kind of to look at the cost-benefit analysis of, of social versus traditional sometimes. But it is not a value discussion, it's a cost comparison. So be very careful that, that that alternate cost of the traditional media doesn't get magically turned into media value. Uh, it's, it's not relative to ROI, it's not relevant to ROI. So be very careful not to fall into that trap. It's very easy for someone to say the cost of doing X through these channels is a million dollars. The cost of doing the same thing through social media channels is only a thousand dollars. Therefore, your ROI was almost a million dollars, which is basically the same as money. It's ridiculous. It is not value. It is cost. It's a cost-to-cost -cost comparison. It is not a value division. Okay, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye, Big Ben. See you later.